Gospel Center with headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. He is married to Dr. Becky, also called of God into full-time ministry, and they are blessed with four children. To minister the word tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche, the Senior Dunamis International Gospel Center. We bow down and worship Java sing we worship Lord. We worship and worship Yahweh. Let Java sing we bow down and worship. Yeah. 
there to help you are always there to help me even when no one else was there you are always there for me even when I can't feel you even when I cannot trace you I still have faith in your word that you are always there for me. Blessed be your name tonight. Breathe upon this service tonight all across the world from the Port Harcourt Convention Center to all the centers across the world. Let your power flow let lives be changed. Let destinies be touched. Let not one person remain the same way they have come. Father, heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. Save the lost. Deliver the afflicted. Let tonight be a defining moment. Save lost souls. 
to the glory of your name. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for the privilege of being at the 2020 National Convention of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity and privilege given to me by the Convention Planning Committee and with the executive of the fellowship, the president, Akitetifa Nyodedo, and all the top leadership of the fellowship. I salute every one of us. Um, I believe that we have come a long way with the full gospel and we believe that the privileges and relationship we have will never be abused. I'm also grateful for graciously being granted the um, um, opportunity of ministering from the Abuja Center for the sake of certain situations that we um, that cropped up and I'm happy that the connection is one and we are together and I believe we will never remain the same in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Job chapter 23 and in verse 10 is the theme of this conference. Come forth as gold. The Bible said in Job 23 and in verse 10, it said, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My objective tonight, preaching on the subject, come forth as gold. My objective tonight is to cause us to have an understanding of the place of pressure in life and destiny. Let's look at that passage again on 23 verse 10. But you know the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. We live in a world today that has passed through so much pressure and is still passing through a lot of adverse situations. We have had a global pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, with associated financial and social consequences. I never knew that for the first time in my life, churches can be closed down for any reason. And week upon week, month upon month, the whole earth was practically under pressure. Associated financial consequences, associated uh, uh, social consequences, associated Spiritual consequences. But both from scripture and from real life, we understand that there is profit even in pressure. We understand that pressures and adverse times in life they have a place in people's lives and destinies. For example, we know that gold is refined only when it is passed through fire. For example, we know that what is called diamond today is nothing but charcoal that passed through millenniums of pressure. And by pressure of millenniums, it gets molecular transformation. And dark charcoal becomes precious diamond transformation by pressure. For example, we know that what we call beautiful butterfly today was once a caterpillar 
that was crawling on the ground and by pressure it underwent what they call the metamorphosis and became beautiful butterfly. For example, we know that the rose flower, the rose flower only brings out its fragrance, only brings out its perfume when it is crushed. It is crushed rose that generates fragrance. For example, we know that childbirth childbirth, the process of giving birth to a child happens by pressure. Uterine pressure, contraction from the mother and at the same time the child puts his own pressure in order to be born. We know all that out of life and out of scripture. The Bible said as soon as Zion travailed, he brought forth her children there is a place of prevailing that comes from traveling in life. And I am trusting the Lord that many of our hearts will be opened at this time to understand that even in these pressure times and in these adverse times that there are things that are coming out beneficially. You believe that? Say aloud, loud, amen. Do you understand that Joseph was a project of pressure? The young man called Joseph at the age of 17, he was sold into slavery and he continued a journey of pressure that lasted for 13 solid years. From the pit to the house of Potiphar, from the house of Potiphar all the way to the prison. And then from the prison, the next place he found himself was the palace. That was how the life of Joseph was, pressure. You remember also the man David. David was the young man who passed through so much pressure. I am thinking that David passed through pressure to a point where he experienced rejection from both his father and his mother. Because he said in Psalm 27 and in verse 10, if my father and my mother forsake me, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. David was a young man abandoned in the wilderness to look after his father's flock by the rest of his brethren. He was the last born. In all families, people take care of the last born. But in the dysfunctional family of David, that was not the case. The last born was, was sent to the bush to face lions and to face bears and to face danger and to face disaster and to face calamity. That was the challenge that David experienced until everybody neglected him. I mean, his father, his mother neglected him. When it was time to anoint a king for Israel, they could, nobody remembered him. His father didn't remember him. His mother didn't remember him. His brothers, none remembered him. And then when the oil couldn't flow, that was when they remembered that, oh, Samuel said, are all these your children? And then Jesus said, oh, there is one. There is one in the bush. It is because you say you are looking for a king that we presented royal materials. Those that are king materials. But since you say that everybody, we can call him. That was the kind of pressure David passed through growing up. And that pressure led him to become the sweet psalmist of Israel. To become the role model king of Israel. To become the, the, the psalmist and then the prophet and then the priest and then and then he, 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 he was king and then was songwriter and then uh, talented instrumentalist and then giant killer and then military general. He was literally everything in the Old Testament. We have, we have Jerusalem today as the city of David and that came out of a man that passed through so much pressure. As I speak right here tonight and all around the world, I don't know who is passing through so much pressure right now. Maybe the COVID pressure, maybe your business encountered a lot of hiccups, but I am anointed to announce to you tonight, in the name of Jesus, something good is coming out of that pressure. Something good is coming out of that pressure. A change of story is coming out of that pressure. If you believe that, you will say the loudest, Amen. You believe that you say the loudest amen. Something good is coming out of this pressure. The devil is going to regret the pressure he has pushed us through and pushed the church through. The Bible said had the princes of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That is how the devil will regret at
chapter 1 and in verse 15, you say, I'm not drunk. I am a woman of a sorrowful heart. No, my Lord, I am not. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have not neither drunk wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. That was how Samuel was birth, birth, born. He came out of pressure. Having said all of this, the center of this message tonight is what is the profit of pressure? What is the profit of adverse times? If adverse times come and if pressure times come, what is the profit of it? And the next thing we shall look at is what is our responsibility in pressure times? What do you do? Number one, what is the profit of pressure or adverse times? Number one, adversity. Adjusts mentality. Adversity adjusts, reprograms mentality. Suffering adjusts sense. Somebody say, what are you talking about? There is a way the mind begins to walk in seasons of pressure. If you don't understand that, I'll show you the prodigal son. The Bible said in Luke chapter 15, if you read the whole of Luke chapter 15 from verse 10 all the way down, you are going to see the story of the prodigal son. And then, he said, likewise I say unto you, there is joined the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And then the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all. And he went into a distant country. And when he had spent all, now he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him to, to feed his fields, to feed swine. He has spent all, you, you, you're running so fast. And he would fain have filled his belly with the hogs that the swine did it and no man gave unto him. Now the Bible said in verse 17, and when he came to himself, when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. When he came to his senses, in the midst of adversity, mentality can be adjusted. In the midst of, 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 of pressure, the mind can be corrected. The truth of the matter is stressful times are thoughtful times. There are things you may never think about. There are ideas and things that may never come your way until your life comes under pressure, until some situations come around you. And then all of a sudden you are wondering, how have I been going with my life like this? Why am I doing things like this? Why am I doing that like this? There is a way I can do this and there is a way I can do that. And, 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 and that happened to the prodigal son. And the truth of the matter is, whenever you come to your senses, you come to your changes. The truth of the matter is, whenever you come to your senses, you come to your changes. The truth of the matter is, when strategy changes, struggles end. The prodigal son came to the end of his struggle by connecting with superior strategy that ended those struggles. That I believe is one of the major profit of adverse times. Where you are forced to think things you were not thinking before. Where you are forced to reason in ways you are not reasoning before. I prophesy to somebody a change of reasoning is bringing you a change of season. A change of reasoning is bringing you a change of season. If you believe that, say the loudest amen number two adversity or adverse times up and pressure reveals and then refines character it reveals then refines character when there are situations and pressures of life that will first reveal and then refine character. Now, the truth of the matter is, you don't know who a person really is until his life comes under pressure. You don't know, now, the truth of the matter is, 
pressure reveals content. If you dip sponge inside water, when you press it, what comes out is water. If you dip sponge inside oil, when you press it, what comes out is oil. Pressure reveals content. Am I communicating to someone here at all? Now, I give you one single example. When Jesus was going to the cross, he said to his disciples, he said to them, he said, many of you will deny me. As soon as the pressure arrives, many will deny me. And Peter said unto him, even if everybody would deny you, I am not going to deny you. I'm, I can't deny you. I can't. It's not possible. It's not thinkable. What are you talking about? I just carried knife just now and cut somebody's ear off because of you. And you are saying that I am going to deny you. I'm not going to deny you. And Jesus said, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to talk like that. Give it a little time. When he said before the cock crow, we use cock crow to measure time in the village. Give it a little time. And you will find out whether your conviction is true or not. Let's give it a little time. Then the pressure arrived. The pressure arrived. The pressure arrived. He saw his master he respected and valued and venerated. Being manhandled and being buffeted. And he was wondering, can they do this to my master? And he doesn't say anything. Then all of us, we are in trouble. And then they began to come one by one. One little girl said, I saw you with Jesus Christ. You are one of them. You say, me? How are you talking about I don't know the man from anywhere. Another person came to him and said, you, you are with Jesus Christ. Even your language, your, your speech is like his speech. The Bible, the Bible said, Peter said, he denied him with an oath. An oath means, like we used to say in Nigeria, if I know the man, let Moto kill him. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I ever if I ever know the man, may it never be well with me for life. He was he was denying the master with a curse, and then another person came to him again. He denied again, and then the cock crew, and Jesus looked at him. I told you, when you were in a hurry, you said you are going to follow me all the way. See what has happened. You don't really know who a person is until they come under real pressure. It was Abraham Lincoln who said, almost anybody can stand anything, but if you want to test a man's character, give them some measure of power, that is on the other side. He denied pressure. On the other side, you look at, okay, another person, another example was Moses. Moses did not rehearse to kill a man. He didn't practice it. He just arrived to, the Bible said he arrived to see the welfare of his brethren. And then he saw one offending another and before he knew it, he killed the man before he was aware of what he was doing. Pressure. Adverse times. Reveal. They reveal character. And then many, many times they will also refine character. Look at the humility that adversity imparted the prodigal son. Instant humility. I am going to go back to my father's house. I am going to tell him, Don't, I am not qualified to be called a son. Make me a servant. That was humility at the frequency of adversity. That happened to the prodigal son. Pete, what, what do you call him? David became one of the kindest person you ever saw in scripture. David was on the run from Saul. Then the Bible said everyone that was in debt, everyone that was distressed, everyone that was discontented, all of them came around David. He was looking for food to eat, but he gathered 400 men around himself. He developed compassion by force because he passed through pressure. Adverse times, pressure times, they reveal and later on refine character. What is the profit of adversity? What is the profit of of pressure. Number three is like unto number one. Adversity and adverse times bring both instruction and revelation. Adverse times and pressure times, they bring rev instruction and they bring revelation. It was Benjamin Franklin who once said, 
the things that heart instruct. Once the things that heart, those things instruct. Truth is, there is a side of God you may never see until you are found in certain situations. For example, the four Hebrew, three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, will never have seen the fourth man except they were in the midst of the fire. They were right in the midst of the fire. Then the fourth man stepped in there. Daniel would never have known that he could sleep with a lion except he was thrown into the lion's den. There is a dimension of God you never see until you are in certain situations. Am I communicating at all? There, was, there is a woman in our church who testified a few Sundays ago, like three or four Sundays ago. This woman and her husband were looking for fruit of the womb and, and the situation was so terrible that they had to go into IVF and then they went into IVF and the woman could not have eggs of herself to conceive by herself. So they had donor eggs. And the donor eggs, IVF number one failed. IVF number two failed. IVF number three by donor eggs all failed. And when all of them failed like that and the devil had done his worst, then the space was clear for God to do his best. Then God said, now, the donor eggs could not work. Your husband is not productive. Now, let me show you that I can give you eggs that will work. And so God gave them the eggs. And without no IVF, they gave birth to their own children to show the devil that when he has done his worst, God does his best. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? I believe there are people seated here today that will see another side of God after this message tonight. I don't know the kind of pressure you are in. I don't know the kind of adverse situation you are in right now. But God will show you that there is a revelation in your situation. There is insight in your insult. Hear that? There is insight in your insult. There is a message out of your mess. There is a word out of your war. And that is coming for you tonight. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. The widow of Zarephath was down to nothing. And she was going to gather, gather sticks to make food for herself and her child to eat and to die. It was at that point that the prophet came to show that there is another side of God. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. Somebody say a louder believers amen. Lift your right and say, Father, I am ready to see your other side. I am ready to see the revelation out of the frustration. I am ready to see the message out of the mess. I am ready. You believe that? Say a louder amen. The fourth thing, the fourth prophet of adverse times or pressure times, I will say it like this. Adverse times or pressure times are opportunity times. There are opportunities presented in adversity. Every problem is progress in disguise. Every adversity carries a seed of advantage. I mean, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how it looks and how terrible it looks. The Bible said, when men say they are cast down, then you shall say there is a lifting up. So, there is a lifting up that happens inside adversity. For example, what was called, what was called, what Israel called the problem by the name Goliath was the platform for the progress of David. Goliath was a challenge that nobody could handle. And for David, Goliath was a challenge. Oh no, Goliath was a challenge too big to face. For David, Goliath was a challenge too big to miss. A target too big to miss. When everybody was running, including the king of Israel, 
That was when David ran towards the Goliath. And by bringing down Goliath, the unknown, remotely disconnected, statistical piece of material called David became instantly notorious. That nobody knew he was a fighter. Nobody knew he was a warrior until he pulled down Goliath. And then everybody said, oh, Saul has slain his thousands. But David has slain his ten thousand. That was when his song began to be sung in Israel. The truth of the matter is, no Goliath, no David. There wouldn't have been a thing or a person called David known anywhere until the Goliath challenge arrived. Am I speaking to anybody here at all? There are things that the enemy might try to throw your way. There are things that the enemy might try to throw across your path that only came to expose you to your generation, advertise you to your generation, announce you to your generation. Only came to open opportunity doors that you never knew were in existence before. And I speak to someone here today in the name that is above every name. The doors that are being opened for you in this season, you shall not miss those doors. You shall not miss those doors. You shall not miss those doors. If you believe that, shout the loudest. Amen. And finally, number five. Adverse and pressure times unveil potential and unction. Adverse and pressure times unveil potential and unction. It looks to me like there are anointings that are only accessible in crisis times. It looks to me like there are graces that don't happen at normal times. It looks like there are drastic oil for drastic moments. Am I speaking to somebody here at all? Now, we talked about the gold that the best of gold came out of the fire. And the diamond was produced out of charcoal. And now, look at that. The greatest anointing of David came as he faced Goliath. For example, if you look at the story of Samson in Judges chapter 14, verse 5, Judges chapter 14, verse 5, then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath and behold a young lion roared against him. Behold a young lion roared at him and then the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. There is a dimension of the spirit that may not come until you are face to face with disaster. Face to face with crisis. Face to face with urgencies and emergencies. It looks, I called it the zero hour anointing. I preached this many years ago in Maurice Cerullo's conference. The zero hour anointing. The anointing where you don't have the time to think of what to do. Where you don't have the time to calculate or even to go and fast and pray and come. There is an anointing that arrives in times of urgencies. In times of danger. In times of crisis. In times of pressure. That anointing came for David to handle Goliath. It came for Samson to handle the lion that came against his father and his mother. There, are, there is a strange oil. There is an unusual anointing. There is a strong power, a strong fire that is made available in times of crisis and in times of pressure. That was the kind of anointing that Elisha functioned when he stood at the gate of Samaria and he said, People have been eating children and they have been eating because there is so much famine in the land. By this time tomorrow, food is going to be so and so. That was the first time he was talking with such audacity because the anointing was available at that time. Is God speaking to somebody here? So when you are face to face with this kind of times, press into God 
and make sure you connect the anointing that will handle the times. Listen, I speak by prophecy to somebody. In this season, the kind of anointing, the kind of potential, and the kind of grace you have never manifested before shall begin to come out of your life effortlessly. You believe it, shout the loudest, amen. I see fresh grace. I see fresh oil. I see fresh fire. I see fresh power. Coming like never before. You believe that? Shout the loudest. Amen. Let me conclude. What do you do? What is your response in times of pressure and adverse times? Number one, maintain your grip on the Lord. Never lose your grip on the Lord. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Even though they say there is COVID all around the world, even though they say everybody's shops are closing, people's businesses are closing, everything is dying and disappearing, there is nothing I am afraid of, for thou art with me. Psalm 23, verse 3, 4, 5. Uh, thou art with me. Maintain your grip on the Lord. Don't let pressure distract you away from your maker. Anything that pursues you into God is a good problem. Anything that pursues you away from God is disaster. Maintain your grip on your maker. Maintain your grip on your savior. Number two, maintain spiritual sensitivity. Open your ears and open your eyes. Psalm 85 and in verse 8. I will hear what the Lord will speak. I am on standby. We are talking about times, times of adversity, at times of revelation. There are times of instruction. There are times where your mentality is changing. Lord, what are you saying to me in this season? What are you saying to me at this time? Is there something you are saying? Is there something you are showing? Is there something you want me to do? Is there a way you want me to do this organization differently? Maintain spiritual sensitivity. Number three, identify what to do differently. Identify what to do differently. Where to adjust character. Where to adjust mindset. Or where to change action. The prodigal son identified what to do differently. I have, I have left my father's house now. I am squandering this money. And this is where I am now. Let me change approach. Listen to me. Every time there is a change of approach, there is an end to reproach. If you can change approach, you can end reproach. Father, what are you saying? Where do I need to change something? What do I need to begin to do differently? And finally, be on the lookout for divine opportunities. Opportunities are opening up. David saw in the midst of of the Goliath challenge, an open forehead. Goliath was so covered, but there was a forehead that was open that his stone could penetrate. Look out for the opportunity. We used to sing an SU song. God has something to say. God has something to say. Listen, listen. Pay close attention. For God has something to say. Open your eyes and look out for the opportunities. And in the name that is above every name, in this season, you shall not miss those opportunities. Is somebody hearing something tonight? 
Have you received anything meaningful tonight? Then stand on your feet with a shout of praise. A loud shout of praise. Stand on your feet with a loud shout of praise. You believe that there is a change of story, a change of situation, a change that this, this season of COVID and all the pressure the world has passed through today is bringing you forth as gold. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Appreciate him. Honor him. Adore him. Worship him. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Ancient of days, lily of the valley, rose of Sharon, Mahashagala, Leperete Kesoko Bagadagala. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We give you the worship. Father, thank you. 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 We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. In Jesus' precious name, lift up your voice and say, Father, my eyes are open to the opportunities in front of me. Father, give me the grace to identify what to do differently. Father, help me with spiritual sensitivity in the name of Jesus. And say, Father, my hands are in your hands. I shall not lose my grip on you. My hands are in your hands. Help me, Lord, never to miss way, never to miss direction in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and speak to God. My eyes are on you. My hands are in your hands. Lift your voice and speak to God. Lift your voice and speak to God. Lift your voice, and speak to God. Lift your voice, your hands and your voice and speak to God. Father, we give you the praise and we give you the honor. In Jesus' precious name. Lift those hands high. Blessed be your name, Father, for tonight. Tonight, God has ended somebody's lower back condition, a spinal condition that God has healed. I don't know the location you are right now, but the power of God is touching that lower back. And somebody's ankle on the right leg is also being healed. And the knee condition on that right leg is also being healed. And a, 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 a left ear that is not hearing, God is opening that left ear right now. And there is a migraine headache that the Lord is disappearing. Somebody hearing voices, I take authority over that spirit of insanity. You have no place in the life, that's right. You have no place in the life of that woman. You have no place in the life of that man power of the Holy Ghost. I declare the yoke broken in the name of Jesus. You don't have breast cancer. I cast that tumor in the, in the breast. That lump on the breast is gone forever. I declare high near is healed in the name of Jesus. That's right. High blood pressure. Your, 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 your blood, your pressure is very high. I declare it's down right now. Diabetes is over. Ulcer, peptic ulcer disease. God is healing. Somebody right now on the, on the chest and Epigastric pain is gone right now in the name of Jesus. Moving object in the head, I command it to move back to hell in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for victory. I declare there is a financial release that is coming. The enemy has tried to cripple your resources and tie down your finances, but I break the hold of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Near success syndrome is over. Failure at the edge of breakthrough is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every witchcraft manipulation and sense curse is broken. Thank you master for hearing. In Jesus precious name. Within the next one minute. I believe there are those here. Who are saying pastor I want to make my ways right with Jesus. I want to be genuinely born again. Maybe temptation and pressure. You drop your hands from the hands of the Lord. And you are not following God as you should. You are not saved. You are not born again. Or you are born again but you went back into the world. Or like our testifier said. You have been religious all your life. But you don't know God at all. Anywhere you are tonight. I'd like you to step forward to the altar here. I'm going to pray for you. Step forward right to this altar. I'll give you the count of seven. Anywhere all around the locations. At the, at the base in Paraka. And everywhere. God bless you. Come with your bags and your Bibles. One. Quickly. Don't be the last to come. Two. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Step forward and make your way right to Jesus. Step forward and be saved. Quickly, 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 quickly. Yes, God bless you. Give them space to come forward. Two. Three. I surrender, Lord. Oh.
surrender all. I surrender, render, render all. God bless you. Bless you. I surrender all. All to Jesus. All to me. with a habit, smoking habit, drinking habit, masturbation, a lifestyle, something you are not happy with, something you know can take you to hell. Not that you, not that you are a bad person, but you have, you have not been able to control it and you want the yoke broken. Also join us now. You want the yoke of a particular lifestyle broken, drinking, maybe alcoholism. You want that yoke broken. Or maybe you are just a moralist, but you are not going to church. I mean, you, you, you don't offend people, but Jesus is not the Lord of your life. I give a second call. Quickly come forward and let's pray. Now, go ahead, take this again. One. Quickly join us now. I want to rededicate myself. I want the addiction broken. I want the yoke broken. I want to make, make heaven at the end of my life. I want to be genuinely born again. God bless you, come forward. Up to be my blessed Savior, I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, I, I surrender. I surrender all. chest and say after me, those of you in the front here and I say, Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back from today, forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to live for you and to do your will. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you and declare the hold of the enemy broken today and it's a new day for you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our officers will soon write on my left hand side there. There is an officer there who wants to talk with you quickly. Please go with them now. Ushers direct them. Give the Lord a big clap of hand for them. A bigger clap of hand for them. And for the rest of us, lift up your hands everywhere you are and hear me tonight. From this moment forward, God will show you that there is an advantage in the disadvantage the devil brought your way. You are passing from the realm of pressure into the realm of power. You are passing into the realm of profit. And that person whose left hand cannot lift is lifted right now. Please let the officers know if you have a testimony. Time is gone. Uh, either now or another time, or another session, that in the course of this nice session, something happened to you. God took care of an affliction. Lift your hands and appreciate the King of Kings. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the worship. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Worship him. Honor him. Adore him. Glorify his holy name. Thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.